Hey friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead and I'm back with week three of the 2024 Every Bit Counts Challenge. This is the food preservation challenge we do every August, both here on YouTube and on Instagram. And the point of the challenge is just to preserve something every day of the month. It doesn't matter how small it is. It could be as simple as just grabbing a bunch of herbs and getting them drying or as complicated as a big bulk day of canning. So I am documenting all of the projects that I'm doing through the month of August here on YouTube and you can check out the last two weeks of projects on my channel. I'll put a link in the description um, for those. So we have more exciting food preservation projects to hopefully inspire and encourage you. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. In last week's video, I showed you these three bushel bags of corn that we were able to start preserving. We did one day worth of canning projects, and then I had shown you this nifty tool that I use. I'll link it in the video description to remove the corn from the cob. My first couple days of this week are going to be spent using up the rest of this corn. We have an overflow fridge in our garage, so thankfully once we had all of that corn shucked, I could put it all in the fridge and then just slowly whittle away at getting it all in jars. So on our first day here, we are going to pack these pint jars with some of this decobbed sweet corn. So I am hoping to do 19 pint jars at once. And so all I'm doing is filling the jars with the sweet corn, and then we're going to top them off with water. This is a raw pack method. This is just room temperature water. And then we're going to put these in the pressure canner for 55 minutes for these pints. I always like to have little pint jars of corn like this on hand. It goes great. I have a salsa recipe that I like to make that calls for just this amount of sweet corn. Sometimes I'll throw a pint of this in my cornbread or just dump it in some soup or whatever other meal that I'm making. So this is just really convenient. We got all of our lids and our rings on there. And as I mentioned, we're going to pressure can these and it's going to be a 55 minute processing time for the pints. I am going to use my four jars pressure canner, which is rather new to me. I typically use a standard Presto canner that only fits about nine to 10 pint jars in it at once. But I wanted to use this four jars canner to see if I could double stack this and you can. So all I did is I put a couple inches of water in the bottom of the canner and then you can put two rows. So I fit 19 pint jars in this, which is wonderful. I'll put a link to the canner in the video description. If this is something you're interested in, you can get 10% off using my discount, but it only took me 55 minutes then to get 19 jars done, which is such a blessing. Usually I'd have to do two separate loads to get this much done um, in a day. The next day I ran out to the garden to do a little harvest look at all of the beautiful colors coming out of the garden this time of year. The oranges and yellows and reds. I just love it. It makes me so happy. So I pulled some goodies from the garden. I decided that we were going to use up some corn by canning some southwestern vegetable soup. I did this last year using the bowl canning recipe and just absolutely loved it. Told myself I had to repeat it this year. So that is what we're going to do, except I'm just going to change a little bit of the recipe and I will do that safely. Don't you worry. We are starting by um, getting some onions here chopped up. We're still working through all of those tiny onions that we're using for preservation projects. And then I'm just, it's about the equivalent of one large onion per jar, just kind of spreading that amongst those seven quart jars. Next, I took the hot peppers that we had there. There was a really hot habanero, some bananas, some other spicy hot peppers, and a whole head of garlic, and some of the rest of that onion that didn't quite chop up in the first batch. We're just going to get that all processed and then also spread the contents of that into those um, seven jars, kind of trying to divide it pretty evenly. Our next ingredient for the Southwestern veggie soup is going to be peppers. Now I want one green pepper per jar as well as one sweet bell pepper. And so that is my goal here. And I don't particularly like the texture of bell peppers, green peppers when I can them, they get kind of mushy. So I do like to really blend those up in the food processor. These are here primarily just for the flavor 
but I don't want that rubbery texture in my final product. Now we are going to add our spices. I'm adding paprika. Um, we're going to add, that was one teaspoon of paprika, two teaspoons of cumin. We're going to do a half a teaspoon of chili powder just because that uh, hot, the hot peppers I added were extremely spicy already. I don't want this to be too hot for my kids. I also added one teaspoon of salt per jar. Now we'll add our other vegetables. You can add whatever you want to this. I am adding carrots, so it's about two to three carrots per jar. And then we're topping off the rest of the jar with that decopped sweet corn that we're trying to work through. Now in the meantime, I had a batch of tomatoes from the garden that were cooking down on the stove. Uh, these were cored, but they do have the skins on them. So I'm just taking my immersion blender once they're softened up and completely blending those skins in. And then we are going to top these jars off with that tomato sauce. Now we want to leave one inch headspace. So I am going to take my chopstick here and stir that around to release any trapped air and then go back and adjust to add a little more liquid to the jars that needed some more to achieve that one inch. Wiping our rims and then we're adding our four jars canning lids just like with the canner from four jars. If you want 10% off lids, use that link in the video description. These are just the very best lids with the best seal rates that I have ever had in my canning career here. Getting our rings on and then these are going to go into the pressure canner for 75 minutes. And when we're done, we're going to have a delicious southwestern vegetable soup. This project didn't use up all of the tomato juice that we had cooked down, so I am going to fill up some jars here and get the rest of this in the fridge. One of my sons wanted to make chili for dinner this week, so we will have some nice fresh tomato juice for him to use in his chili, so that is a bonus. But while I was working on that, the canner was working on the soup, and here it is all done. So let me explain to you how I'll use this. This is just kind of a base like a lot of the other soup bases that I'm making. When I want to make this this winter, I'll dump this jar into a pot, add some more tomato juice, I'll add some canned beef or some beans. Um, you can even add pasta and make it kind of like a chili mac. It's so versatile, but we will definitely bulk this up. One jar itself will not feed my family. I will have to add other jars to the base in order to make a full meal. It was now day four with this corn and I knew that I had to finish it up and get it out of the fridge before it started to go bad. And so I decided to fill up and do one um, canner load of quarts of the sweet corn. So the process for doing this is exactly the same as the one I showed you for the pints. The only difference is going to be that these are going to process in the pressure canner for 85 minutes. The pints I showed you only processed for 55 minutes, but other than that, the entire process is exactly the same. So this is just a really quick and easy way to get those corn in some jars and preserved um, because they really did need to be dealt with. Uh, sweet corn will not last indefinitely in the fridge. And then these jars of corn will just make a nice side dish for meals that we want to have over the winter. You know, if I roast a turkey and I make some mashed potatoes and some green beans, we can just take a quart of that corn and also warm it up. Now the very last of the corn that I had, I decided to just do one or two small batches of corn on the cob in the freezer. My family does not particularly love the taste of frozen um, corn on the cob. The texture, if you do blanch it, isn't terrible, but it definitely doesn't taste like fresh sweet corn. So it's just not my favorite way to preserve it. But there are a couple meals that we make. One in particular is a shrimp boil that Adam does every December. And it does call for corn on the cob like this. And it's impossible to find corn on the cob in the store in December. So we freeze some up for that. We need to blanch it first. So we boiled it for just about a minute and a half. That's it. And then you immediately put it in some ice water like this. This is called blanching and this stops the enzyme action in the vegetable and retains the nutrition. It also helps with texture. Another thing that's going to help with texture is making sure you get all of the excess water off of your corn 
before you package it up. If you have water on there, it's just going to get icy and you're going to have ice on your corn in the freezer and it's just not going to be a good texture when you go to thaw it. Another thing that helps with texture is vacuum sealing it. So that's what I'm doing here. Sucking all that extra oxygen out will make this the best, best texture possible when it comes out of the freezer. So that's it for the corn. I don't want to see any more corn. I'm very happy to be done with those three bushel bags. On our next day, I had headed out to the garden and done a carrot harvest, our first harvest of the season uh, for carrots. These are just the little ones. We had big ones that came with this harvest that I put away in the fridge to use for fresh eating and for our meals. These are just, you can see, the really teeny tiny ones that I just decided would be better off um, to just be preserved and used up in another way because I do like to have some frozen carrots. I'm taking a homegrown loofah sponge here and scrubbing those carrots really well to get all of the dirt off of them. Fresh garden carrots come pretty dirty. And then we are blanching them just like we did with the corn on the cob, except these were boiled for about five minutes instead of just the one and a half minutes for the corn. So after the five minutes of boiling, I shocked them with water just like this, and then I'm going to put them in the food processor to chop them up, to shred them into little tiny bits, because I have a carrot cake muffin recipe that my children really love. I love to make it in the winter, and it calls for shredded carrots like this. Each recipe calls for two cups of shredded carrots, so that is the portion that I'm going to be freezing these in. I'm also going to be vacuum sealing these, just like I did with the corn on the cob. And once it's done, we'll get these in the freezer and this will give me five batches of those muffins um, throughout the rest of the year. So that's really exciting. On this next day, I had spent about six hours during the day completely cleaning the downstairs of my house and I was exhausted and having terrible Braxton Hicks. But at the end of the day, I had to preserve something and I didn't have the energy to run out to the garden. <laughs> so I just grabbed this bag of peaches from last year that had gotten forgotten in the freezer. There is little to no nutrition left in these after a year in the freezer. So we're gonna make something out of them that is not for nutrition, but just for the peach flavor, and that is peach jam. So I just took the frozen peaches, these are skins and all, put them in the pot with a little bit of water on the bottom to prevent them from sticking and burning. And we just soften those up. And then I'm taking my immersion blender and just trying to chunk the peaches up. I don't wanna turn them completely into a peach sauce. I do wanna have some chunks in there. So I guess it's more like a chunky peach sauce. And you will not notice those peels, I promise you, um, after they've been cooked and blended up like this. So to make our jam then, I'm just gonna add a package of pectin here. And we're bringing this to a full boil. And then once it comes to a full boil, we're going to add four cups of sugar, bring it back to a boil, and then we can add it to our jars. And like I said, this is just a quick project. It took me about 20 minutes. It was all I had the energy for, but I was happy to get that bag of peaches put to use. They really weren't good for anything like smoothies anymore, but um, they did still have good peach flavor. And so we will enjoy this jam. Um throughout the winter, just on some homemade bread and things. This is gonna be really tasty. So for jam, it's a fruit, it's a high acid food, so you don't have to pressure can it like the other things that I've shown you. You can throw this in the water bath, which is just essentially boiling the jars for 10 minutes. And when you're done, you have shelf stable jam that can be added to your pantry shelves. Okay, time for another project. Headed out to the garden once again, and I was looking for peppers because I want to do a batch of chili base. This was another favorite. I could not can enough of this last year. My kids just love chili. We can eat it once a week, at least throughout the winter. So what I'm gonna do to start my chili base, I'm actually canning this in pint jars, as you can see, because this is gonna be a really concentrated chili base. This is just all the flavors of your chili concentrated into one tiny jar. So I'm using up more of these tiny onions and I'm chopping them up and putting them into the food processor, which has been my habit lately so that I don't have to hand chop all of the onions. And then just taking that kind of slurry of onions and spreading it into my nine pint jars here. 
Just like with our southwestern vegetable soup, I am going to add hot peppers. I'm just doing a mix of random hot peppers that I saw in the garden. I just grabbed whatever I had. It's habaneros, some jalapenos, um, and then I'm also going to add some cloves of garlic. And then we will chop all of that up in the food processor, add that to the jars. We want this to be pretty spicy because it is going to be a chili base. And so if that seems like a lot of hot peppers, don't worry. I'll explain later how this will um, be used. Now we're going to add the equivalent of two large green peppers to each jar and just get those all chopped up in, in there. Like I said, this is just a flavor base. So when we're adding our spices, we want to make it a little spicier than um, we think we want it because we're going to dilute this down by adding jars of tomato sauce, jars of meat, jars of beans. This small pint is going to end up going into over a gallon of food later on. So you really want to have a lot of flavor in there concentrated when you dilute it. So you'll see that represented in my spices here. I'm doing two tablespoons of cumin per jar. I'm doing one tablespoon of paprika per jar. I'm going to do a half a tablespoon of chili powder just because I already have those habaneros in there. And then I'm adding a tablespoon of salt per jar. But you could do whatever seasonings you want in whatever amounts you want. It isn't going to affect the safety of the canning process by changing up your spices. Now we have our tomatoes cooking down once again, another day, another tomato project, leaving those skins on. It is safe. You are allowed to leave your skins on when you're canning. National Center for Home Food Preservation says you can leave your skins on. It just might affect the texture and it could be bitter. So you just need to experiment with it and see if you mind the texture with or the taste with those skins on we don't it doesn't bother us when i use the immersion blender we don't even notice the skins at all they're completely blended into the sauce and it's just extra nutrients in the skins it doesn't increase your risk of botulism that's mostly the skin of root vegetables that have been down in the soil the skin of this is really no different than the skin of something like a cucumber um, that you can in pickles. So don't worry about the safety of that. National Center for Food Preservation, Home Food Preservation says that that is perfectly safe. So we're filling up the jars the rest of the way with that sauce. And look, as we stir that up, look how that headspace changes. Always debubble your jars for this reason, because then you're going to want to go back and adjust. And I'm leaving one inch headspace for this project. So I am treating this chili base just like you would a soup. And so the processing time for pints of soup is 60 minutes. So that is what we're going to pressure can these for. But before we get them in the pressure canner, we do need to add those lids. And once again, you can get 10% off the very best canning lids by using my code 3 rivers 10 So we're going to get our rings on there get these into that pressure canner and process them for 60 minutes. Now I did have leftover sauce once again, but we had just had chili the night before. I didn't need to put this in the fridge. So what I'm gonna do is just water bath can these quarts of tomato sauce. You saw that I had citric acid there in my hand. If you're gonna water bath tomato products, you really should add something to acidify it. I do a half a teaspoon of citric acid. I buy it in bulk from Azure Standard. That ensures that the pH level is low enough in this tomato sauce to be safely water bath canned. Modern tomatoes, the acidity level of them can really vary. Heirlooms are different than hybrids. Um, the time that you harvest them can affect the acidity. So if you're pressure canning, you really don't have to worry about that. But if you're water bath canning, add some lemon juice add some citric acid and that will ensure that it is safe. If it's too acidic when you open the jar, you can always add a little bit of baking soda um, to your sauce when you use it and that will neutralize that acid. So we're just gonna wipe those rims and we are gonna get these in the water bath canner. Quarts of tomato sauce like this are gonna process in the water bath for 40 minutes. So it's not a big batch, but hey, I'm using it up because I didn't need it this week for meals, so why not add it to the pantry shelves? So I had both my water bath and my pressure canner running at the same time. 
to get these two little projects done. And when they were finished, we have our nine little jars here of chili base, and that'll make nine wonderful batches of chili this winter. And then I just have my two little jars here of tomato sauce. So what a fun week. We really got a lot of food put up. It for this week's video, I hope you enjoyed all of those preservation projects that we were able to accomplish. We are now officially halfway through the challenge, which is amazing. The month is really flying by. Um, and I'm actually really happy with the progress I have made so far. I hope you guys are happy with the progress you're making towards building up your pantry. I know my main goal of the challenge this year was to get a lot of whole meals in jars. I'm just in a stage of life where that makes the most sense for me and my busy family. And so I'm so happy I've put, um, I think it's maybe 45 or so uh, meal bases in jars that will help me have really quick lunches on our busy homeschool days, as well as some quick dinners this winter when we're running to and from activities. So my goal for the rest of the challenge is to continue in that. I wanna have a whole shelving unit just full of meals in jars. Um, and so I'll bring you lots more ideas for things like that in the next two weeks of videos. Um, other than that, we're just going to keep plugging along at the little bits and pieces that are coming in from the garden as well as any good deals on bulk produce I'm able to find from local farmers here in the coming weeks. So all right, my next goal, I need to take my Sharpie here and label all of the wonderful jars that we were able to preserve this week. I need to get them labeled with the contents and the date and then we can take them on down to the cellar. And then as always, at the end of the challenge, we'll do a full pantry tour um, to show you everything that we've been able to um, save up and store up so far this growing season. So continue to follow the hashtag. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you do that both here on YouTube and on Instagram. There are so many amazing channels um, and pages on Instagram that are participating. I myself have found some really interesting ideas for preservation that I'm gonna try out by looking at other people's content. You can find some really neat channels to follow um, if you check out that hashtag. So, all right, friends, we'll be back next week. I hope your week is blessed. Bye.